if you get a copy of Remedy BG, it's literally just like a zip file. All you have to do is just grab an executable. And if you want to update it, you just download a new executable, just one executable. And if that executable is anywhere on your machine, you double click it and it runs. And look at how fast that is. It's instant. You double click it and your debugger is running. Let me go ahead and set up a build here. It's exactly like you would expect in the session menu. There's just a thing where you can say what it is you want to debug. It also has a nice feature where you can just hit this plus and you can make as many of these configs as you want. Once you set these up, you can switch between them quickly. So if you want to run your debug, you just hit control shift one. If you want to run your release, hit control shift two. You have the ability to hit F5 and your game runs or, or you know, whatever your program is uh, that you're running like you see it here. You can do hover, you can do the same sort of stuff you would expect to do in a, any other debugger where you can kind of like pop things open quickly. What I tend to do is I just, you know, I type them into the watch window. The watch window works exactly as you would expect. However, unlike nowadays for things like Visual Studio, for example, you actually have extremely fast updating of the watch window. And this is pretty important. If I, for example, add Ray Origin Single, uh, to the watch window, you can see that it's a vector here with an X, Y, Z. If I hold down the F5 button, you can see just how fast the watch window updates. It's always instant, so when I hit this breakpoint, I'm never waiting to see. Any time I let go, I know that the watch window is actually up to date. I realize that's a ridiculous thing to say, but if you were to do this in Visual Studio, it, you wouldn't be able to do that. It's gotten so slow and latent, they basically kick those updates, I think, to a delay. You can't do anything like this. So I really appreciate this aspect of Remedy. Why? I'm trying to save myself time. I don't want to be waiting for my debugger because the only reason I'm using a debugger is to save me time. If the debugger itself is sluggish, then the whole point of using a debugger goes away. It's not helping me anymore. While we're in the lighting code, which happens to be heavily multi-threaded, if I were to start stepping through, one of the things you can see is it becomes sort of nonsensical. I'm stepping and it's just going all over the place and you might be like, what is happening? Is that broken? But actually that's the behavior you would see in most debuggers. What's actually happening there, if you look down here at the thread list, is we're actually seeing multiple different threads hitting these lines one at a time. It's really really annoying and if you use something like Visual Studio you have to go do something called freezing threads where you right click on all the threads and hit freeze and it just sucks it's a really bad workflow so what remedy bg does that's really awesome is it uses a a uh, digital audio workstation kind of a framework for it, where not only is there the ability to freeze or mute, basically, threads so that they won't do anything, there's also a solo option. So what you could do is just click solo and it will automatically freeze all of the threads that aren't that thread, just as long as I keep that going so I can single step through what it's doing. Then as soon as I'm done, I just one click again and I'm back to the state that I was in before where all the threads are running. So it's a really, really great piece of human factors that, again, just makes it so that your debugging can be streamlined fast and find the bug, which is what you were trying to do, rather than sitting around handling your debugger, which is not ever what you want to do. Breakpoints in RemedyBG are actually really great. There are ways that we can add conditions, for example, to our breakpoints. That might not seem particularly interesting because most other debuggers do have the ability to set breakpoints on conditions. However, the very interesting part of RemedyBG is it's way, way faster. So unlike Visual Studio, for example, where when you set a condition on a breakpoint, your execution time plummets, setting condition here is really not that bad. You can run almost at speed and still put conditions in. There's not much of a way to really demonstrate that to you without showing you like the same conditional breakpoint in Visual Studio and in Remedy. But if you're the kind of person who likes to set conditional breakpoints, you know how slow they are in something like Visual Studio, try Remedy BG setting the same breakpoint. You will be shocked at how much faster it is. So obviously not a lot to say about the other features here. There's, you know, a pretty straightforward stuff for like a register view. One of the nice things that Remedy lets you do is construct views, even of registers if you want to. So in here you can say like uh, XMM zero, for example. And if I want to see this as something like four floats, and it formats it in a really nice way, right? It's like, okay, there's that value of that as floats. And similarly, I can actually ask for anything that happens to be that type as a PS as well. So if like one of my values like max XYZ, for example, I can ask for that to be viewed that way as well. So if I say like PS, it will show me one of my named variables in the same format. 
Obviously, you can always switch to viewing it as something else. These, it isn't pack doubles, but if I ask it to be pack doubles, it would show it to me that way. Uh, similarly, if I wanted four packed integers, I can get those uh, unsigned. And these are just the same nomenclature that's used in the Intel Intrinsics Guide. So if you can remember it for the Intrinsics, you also now know it for Remedy BG, which is also great. Okay, so a lot of times in game development, you will have things like four by three matrices, three by four matrices, four by four matrices, things like that. So if you do have a matrix like we have here, like our projection matrix, you can see that if you expand it, you will see basically the same thing you would see in any other debugger, right? Like you just got these drop downs here. And what you end up with is something that you can read. Like it's not that bad. I can see all the values, but it's definitely not as convenient as it could be because it's kind of hard to keep track, especially when you kind of get these things. They don't line up when you have some that are like high precision, some that are low precision and, and so on. So Remedy BG has this nice modifier. You can just put comma MTX and that will automatically show you something as a four by four matrix. You can also say MTX like four X three or something if you want a different dimension matrix. So if you have something like a four by three matrix instead of a four by four matrix, you can still see it. This makes things a lot easier because now you can see the matrix looking the way that you would write it by hand if you were trying to write it in math form, which just makes it a lot easier to work with because now you can actually see what the heck is going on in your matrices, which is awesome. So a lot of times what you'll have in code, at least if you do it the way I do, is you end up with code that looks something like this, where you want to be able to represent strings as something that has like a pointer to the data for the string and also like a count. In this case, we have a tokenizer and it's tokenized a comment in our asset source file. And you can see that it says that the string is 355 characters long and that this is the data. So if I was to add this to the watch window, we would get exactly what you would expect to get in any debugger, which is, you know, honestly kind of useless. It's not horrible. It shows us a little preview, but it's fairly useless if you're actually trying to debug this and you want to see like what the actual data is. Now in Visual Studio, there's this crappy little like magnifying glass you can click on and it kind of sucks because it doesn't update in real time. It's also not in the watch window where I wanted it pops up this separate thing. Remedy BG is awesome because it actually lets you just specify exactly the thing you wanted to see. So for example, I've got this token.txt. I can say, Let's see token.txt data for a particular count. So token text count. If I open it up, I get the same thing you would expect to see in Visual Studio where it's all the individual character codes. Adding just the word str in front of it magically turns it into a great little inline window that's like a complete little text display of the entire thing, right? And it still has e that little magnifying glass that will actually pop up the window like it has in Visual Studio. But since I don't really even care about that, I usually just leave it exactly like this, which allows me to see everything that I wanted to see without actually having to leave the comfort of my watch window. To me, this is like a total game changer because all my strings work this way. I never use null terminated strings in my actual coding day to day. So just this feature makes it so much easier to debug string stuff when I'm working on string heavy things. It's so nice because now my watch window just works. I can see all the strings and I don't have to worry about popping up these stupid windows to actually see what's going on. Remedy BG, however, doesn't stop there. If you have something like in this case, we have a background thread that's loading asset data and it's got this work order here. You can see it's like a struct. And what I've done is I've just told the thread, you know, there's this destination buffer and it's just blind memory, right? This is just a loader thread. It doesn't really know what it's loading. And so when I need to debug code like this, I need to be able to look at this destination without really knowing anything. It doesn't have like a structure to it, right? It's just a bunch of binary data that got loaded. And I now need to go look to see if that binary data comports with what I think that it should look like. And so obviously Remedy BG does support the standard sort of thing you would do, which is I can open a couple of memory windows, which are just blind memory windows, and I can put addresses in here, which is what you would normally expect to do. So for example, if I want to view the memory that's at this particular place, I can do that and see a normal memory view of it exactly as you would expect. However, when you're working with code that does a lot of memory stuff, you would rather have the watch window show you a bunch of things right in line together that are different memory locations so that you can easily see memory moving back and forth and see when you're reading from one thing or writing to another. Remedy lets you do that really easily. You can type in a format specifier for memory. So for example, if I want to look at 
double words, for example, 32 bit values. The code for that is DD. And then I can just say whatever the size is that I want to look at. That will put an inline memory view right here that I can have in my memory window at all times. So don't actually have to create a separate memory window for it. I can just have them in the watch window. So if there were other things I want to do, I could just stack them up here. Furthermore, I can always pop this out into its own memory window. So if I do decide at any time that I want a memory window just displaying this particular location in this particular format, I can always just branch those off really quickly, close them really quickly and paste together whatever I actually want to see in terms of memory. So memory becomes as easy as a watch, which is a really big boon to people who actually need to work with these low level memory kinds of things from day to day. I can also ask for other formats. So for example, if I want word data instead, I can, I can get quad words as well. So again, you can just kind of like ask for how you want the memory formatted, just like you would in a normal memory window. But here you can do it in like a shorthand notation. So it's quick to put it into the watch window. Let's suppose that I'm down in the code here and I'm looking at some stuff. I'm working on this thing. There's an enclosing kind of structure called a sim region that has a bunch of information. And it's kind of like a bundling structure that it, it tells me the context. Like it's got like where the origin is and all these sorts of things. And when I go into certain leaf functions, like let's say I'm going into this draw ground cover function here, you can see that I'm not going to be passing that in. So once I get into draw ground cover, you can see that I lose the ability to view that sim region. And so Remedy BG has a lot of tools for working with the scope that make it easy to solve this problem if you want to just save yourself time. So one way that this might work is there's a little lock icon that I can click on. When I click on the lock icon and then I step in here, it's just not going to update this sim region variable. So while I'm in here in draw ground cover, the sim region itself is going to stay the same value that it used to be. So it won't actually change to the fact that there isn't a sim region in this particular scope. That's a really easy way to do that, but that's not the only way you could do that. So for example, if we actually maybe weren't ever out here, like let's suppose that my breakpoint hadn't been set on draw ground cover and my breakpoint was actually set here. So when I run to here, a sim region never had a value to begin with. In fact, let's say I had never even typed it in and I type it in now, I type sim region, well, it's not going to find it. So instead of having to go hunt up the stack, like the way you would do this in a traditional debugger is you go to call stack, you go up here and find sim region like that right? That's not very useful. In Remedy, it becomes more useful because I can quickly click quick lock and then come back here. So that's one solution. But what if it was way up the stack there? In fact, we could imagine a situation where it was way up the stack. Let's say out here as game state, right? So I wasn't even looking at sim region. I was maybe looking at game state. So in here, you know, I, I type in uh, game state. And now I'm sitting here walking the stack to like find out where it actually is so I can lock it. If instead I just prefix it with a little scope, this is the scope specifying syntax in Remedy BG is just to enclose in brackets what you want to do. Star says find the first one of these by looking up the stack. Exactly what I just did, clicking through call stack till I saw it, that's what Remedy is going to do. And now I don't have to worry about which function I'm in. I can just step through. And as long as I'm underneath somebody who knew what the game state was, we're all good. If you are working on code that's a little more complicated in terms of how the call graph works, let's say you're in something where you've got a recursive function and you just want to know what the previous one was or what two up was. You can also in here put a specific number. One says go one up and see if it's there. Two says go two up, see if it's there. Three says go three up. And so we can look at different ones by putting different numbers in there. You can imagine something where you're looking at, you know, node or something, and you want to do something like this, like show me the whole stack of what node was each of the ways up. That is one way you can easily do it in Remedy uh, and it will work. Another thing you can do in Remedy BG lets you do some things in the debugger that normally you would think you would have to write an extension to a debugger to actually use in something like Visual Studio. Here is an example where I have a set of assets. There is an asset holder basically that just has an array of assets. You can see here that I can look at the first one. And of course there's an asset count in there as well. So if I just do assets, asset count, you can see that I get the standard view that I would normally get and that view 
view is fairly useless to me because there's just a ton of data in here. So honestly, if I'm not looking at a specific thing at any given time, th there's really not a whole lot that I'm going to do with this particular way of viewing things that helps me at a glance. So one of the things that Remedy BG has recently added that's kind of amazing is you can now do tabular displays of your data where if you have an array listing like this, you can actually tell it to make a columnar display with only specific things. For example, let's suppose in here that the thing that I mostly care about is the state of the asset and what type of asset it actually is. Maybe inside the HHA type here, for example, and the state here. So one that's actually too deep and one that's only one deep. What I can do is say I want a columnar display, which you can do by appending braces here, and I can list separated by semicolons the things I want. I just use dollar sign as the particular element that is currently being displayed in the array, and then I can use the dot syntax to just access something off of it. So in this case, let's say dot HHA dot type. So that's like HHA type just accessing the struct. And then I also want dot state. So those are the two things that I want it to list. When I hit return, you'll see that it transforms this part of the watch window into a really nice columnar display that shows me all of those values listed in an easy to use spreadsheet on the side. Now I can also go one step further and say, I, I want to use this a lot. Like maybe I want this to be something that I'm, I'm going to do a whole bunch of debugging of the things that are in this table. So I want to actually make it easier for me to read. I can do that by introducing column titles that I can say specifically what they are. So you can see here, I've now said type and state. And also maybe I want to make these things even easier to read. In this case, those happen to be enumerated values values that are not actually uh, recorded as enums in the actual struct. So Remedy doesn't know what they are, but I can even inside the syntax cast things. So if I want to say cast that to an HA asset type, which I know that it is, so it's easier to read, I can do that right in the syntax, just like I would do for any other watch value. Same with the state. I happen to know that's an asset state value that wasn't marked up in the actual struct. No problem. Remedy allows me to mark it up right at the time when I do the columnar listing. So again, I don't have to worry if the original code had that information in it, I can just add that information after the fact. Now this is kind of amazing. I now have an asset table that says what all the assets are in the system and what their state is. I can also do some other things like, for example, I can add a column that is the index. So if I want to here, I can actually put one that is, is the actual index of the asset. So if I want to know which asset I'm looking at, knowing it's asset 31 in the table, I can get that piece of information too. So this is incredibly powerful as it actually is, but in Remedy, you can even take this an additional step further. Like we saw with things like strings, you can always pop out a complex watch window value into something you can actually dock or drag around. So I can take this asset table and actually make it a permanent docking asset table that I can look at all the time. However, one of the things that you'll notice is this stops working very quickly if I step out of scope because now that expression doesn't actually evaluate anything. But as we saw, we actually have features in Remedy already that allow me to permanently look at things if I can say how you might find them in a scope. And so what I can actually do now is put these two things together. I can actually combine the power of the dynamic scoping stuff that's in Remedy with the power of the tabular display to get the best of both worlds. The asset structure is always stored off of the game state. If I say, hey, Remedy, go find in the enclosing scope a game state, whichever the first one is that you find, get the asset table off of that. If I do that, then I can actually write this expression in a way that anytime I'm in any code that was called from somewhere that knew about a game state, State, it can pull the asset table out of that dynamically. I can then lock that as one of my watch windows. And now no matter where I am in the game or what functions I happen to step into, my asset table is just right there on the side, dynamically updated in real time for me at all times. And I can scroll through it just like I would if it was some kind of custom extension that I'd written. But instead of having to go through all the trouble of compiling and building a custom extension, instead, I just use this column syntax. Wow. Slicing things out in any way, putting them into a table and having it find it automatically no matter where I am. This works across runs. So if I actually just step back into the game here, this is a completely new run of the game. So the asset table is going to be a completely different location. If I just start running the game and I break somewhere, as soon as I hit my code, it finds the asset table again. Total magic. If you thought that looked like the kind of debugger that you want to use every day, 
Just go to remedybg.itch.io and you can buy it there. And like I said, it downloads and installs trivially. It is literally just a zip file with an executable in it. You can put somewhere on your hard drive and that is the end of it. Highly recommended. And this was not a paid placement or an advertisement or anything. I literally just did this because I love this debugger and I want to see it continue being developed. So I wanted more people to know about it. And also I just kind of want people to know there's an option out there for a really fast, convenient debugger they can use on Windows in case they are getting bogged down by Visual Studio like I used to be. They want to use Remedy BG for sure. So check it out, and I hope you like it as much as I do.